open up oh. and pray and then give me an attention. Open up and pray and give me an Yeah, I think, I don't know. Everybody. Good morning, everybody. Oh, good morning. So good, morning. good to be in the worst in the uh, the house of the Jones, <laughs> and I thank them for inviting me today. Amen. Uh, we yeah. had a wonderful Bible study. Yes, good did. morning. Um, I pray that all out there is doing well. I can't wait till we can come together again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in God's will, we will we'll be back, mm -hmm. and but we're gonna do it in His time. That's, That's right. right. That's um, right. So we're coming this morning with uh, worship songs, and uh, we just want you to open up your minds and. Even though we're not here together, sing along with us. I mean, yes. I, I see myself every Sunday just be up singing and everything from Amen. Pastor Nell. Sing along with us. Yes. All right, so let's get this going and give God praises and just lift his name up this morning. He's Amen. Worthy. Yes. yes, he's Amen. worthy. He's worthy. We'll turn up praising him because he's a glorious God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. Thank you. 
shall rejoice and be glad in it. God is an awesome God what a mighty God we serve. We're praying for the anointing, for the saturation of the Holy Spirit to fill this place. We have already had a great time so far and we want to thank God for taking us even higher. Amen. I'm going to open up with a word of scripture and then the evangelist Perlene is going to take us higher to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning Let's do I love the Psalms. We're going to come from the book of Psalms. From the Psalms. From the book of Psalms. Let's look at the hundredth number of the Psalms. Amen. Psalm 100. And then we're just going to bless God today. We're going to lift him high because he is worthy. Amen. Psalm 100 says, Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Mm -hmm. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the understanding of this holy word. Amen. I'm going to ask the evangelist Perlene to lead us to the throne of grace and take us on higher. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have us here this morning, Lord, to worship your name. Yes. Lord, my prayer is going to go out to all that's lost, their loved ones, in this battle that we are going through right now, Lord. Yes. Lord, you know our cry. So, Lord, I just ask and pray for those that I cannot name and those that are here this morning. If you'll bow your heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord. You know what's going on on, in this world and on the land. Father, there is so much hurt and so much pain right now. Lord, I ask that you just touch hearts this morning, Lord, of those that are aching touch bodies this morning, Lord, that those that are suffering with the pain. And Lord, just let them know that it's you that holds the power in your hand. Yes. Yes. All these circumstances and these situations that we're going through. Father, there's nothing under the sun that is new to you. There's nothing under this, this in this world that you don't already know what's going on. But Lord, give us the strength and the, yes, the power and the wisdom and the understanding to take into our heart and listen with our ears and know that you're God and you're God all, all by yourself. All by yourself. Father, I ask you to bless those ones that want to come to you but don't know how. Yes, Lord. Bless them. Lord, give us the strength yes. to take your word out to them and give us the words to say that make them just wonder and, and want to come running to you calling your name Lord Lord I ask that you bless each and every home 
with the waves. Yes. Then the bubble will bless our land. Well, we're crying, Lord. We're coming, Lord, with a humble heart. Lord, we're seeking you. And we're trusting that you will turn this around. We trust you, Lord, yes. We trust that you will help us to find those ones and let them know that you are turning around, Lord. Lord, we love you and we know we that you Lord. have all the ability yes. to do the things that we don't have to do right now. But we know that you give us the power to come to you and ask yes. for that power. We know that you said that we can move mountains yes. if we have the faith. And Lord, we know that we can do this through you, Father. And we ask that you give us the strength and ability and the just give us the, the, the mindset to touch and to bless. Because Lord, you have done so much for us. There's nothing that have been done for us that you have not done. And so many of us don't know that, Lord. Bless the people, Father, that I have come across this, this week, this month. to their eyes, Lord. Those people, please touch them, Lord. Because just knowing that tear, knowing that tear that they shed, Lord, why I spoke to them, why you spoke through me to them, lest you know that they want to know you more. So, Father, I ask that you just touch them, that they will see and they will want wisdom of your word. Holy Spirit, we feel him in the house today. Yes, Praise God. thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Amen. Thank God for his presence. Today is Sunday. Amen. June the 14th. Amen. Sunday, June the 14th. And we are in the house of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Wherever we are, God is with us. Yes. God's presence is with us. Yes. If we claim to be blood bought, fire baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, we understand that God's Spirit is always with us. And wherever we go, God's Spirit is with us. So we need to make sure that we um, treat God with value. Amen. Treat His presence, His Holy Spirit with value. Because wherever we go, the Holy Spirit is with us and it becomes a sanctuary. It becomes grounds 
where God dwells at. Wherever we set our feet, God is with us. And if God is with us, things ought to change. There should be a shift in the atmosphere. Amen. There should be some things that uh, change because God's presence is with us. Right. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God for this opportunity to come before you this morning. We are a part of God's Will Christian Fellowship, and we just want to uh, give God honor and bless his name today. We thank you for joining in with us. We thank you for uh, being a part of this uh, worship experience, and we pray that you have been richly blessed already. As we go forward, we're looking for more of God's blessings. Amen. As pastor, just a few things I would like to share uh, from pastoral emphasis with the house today. First of all, I want to say that uh, God is up to something. Yes. Amen. Is. God is up to something. Somebody say God is up to something. God is up to something. Amen. This past Tuesday, I believe it was, uh, First Lady and I were just sitting around uh, talking in the study, and we were on the conversation of talking about chairs. We were talking about some chairs, getting some chairs. Uh, she was speaking about getting chairs for the house, and then we kind of started talking about getting chairs for the church. And I kid you not, by the, as the Holy Spirit is my witness, about three seconds after we started talking about church for the chairs, chairs for the church, amen, uh, Julius, Frank, one of my longtime high school buddies, uh, gave me a call. Three seconds. Three. One, two, three. Ring, ring, ring. Three seconds after we talked about the chairs and said, hey, uh, Pastor, uh, I've got some chairs and I'm working at the school. I'm working at they're wanting to donate some chairs. Yes. God is up to something. And uh, they had 223 chairs. Wow. And the racks that go with them yes. that were donated to our ministry free of cost. Yes. All we had to do was go and pick them up. Yes. Amen. Amen. God is awesome. Yes. Now, the question is, why would God give us 223, 33, 233 chairs? Why would God give us 233 chairs? Because God is up to something. Amen. God is up to something. So we're just going to trust him. I, I believe in my spirit that God is getting ready to bless us with the church and his timing. So I just, I just want to be prepared for whatever God wants to do. Amen. God is up to something. Also, I want to share with you that tentatively i'm excited about it july the 5th we're going to have hopefully prayerfully tentatively a holy homecoming right. amen a holy homecoming amen first sunday in july right. holy homecoming where we're going to uh if, if things continually progress and there are no other um implications from COVID 19 this will be our first post, if you will, or pre-post uh, meeting and gathering where we're going to uh, have Bible study and worship service here at the Jones house, at Pastor and First Lady's house, Lord willing. Now, we, we want to be obedient and, and, and uh, to the Holy Spirit, so if that, the Holy Spirit changes that, then we'll definitely change it. We do not want to jeopardize the health of anyone. Amen. So uh, we will just continually pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us so that we don't jeopardize anyone's health. For those who are most vulnerable, we pray that you would remain at home. We don't want you coming out. And I mean, we can't stop you from coming, but we would pray for those who are most vulnerable. That would be our, our, old, our more mature saints, excuse me, my, the more mature saints. If you don't feel comfortable coming, we completely understand. We will continually air on social media, so you'll be uh, you'll have it, uh, that avenue to, to view the services. But Lord willing, first Sunday in July, which is three Sundays from now. So prayerfully, things will continue to get better. And if the Lord says the same, July the 5th, first Sunday in July, July the 5th, we'll have a holy homecoming. Now you know, the, the homecomings, y'all remember going to homecomings in high school? When you had the homecoming game, everybody would come to, to root on the team. Well, we're all coming together to give God some glory, give him some praise because he's worthy. He kept us through COVID-19, and if we contained it or we caught it, he still kept us in that. And even if some of us have died, we may look at it as unfortunate. But if they were saved, God, they have their ultimate homecoming. They're at home praising God. 
So we're just going to be excited about it. Look for more details concerning our holy homecoming on July the 5th. And I believe uh, uh, that's all the pastoral emphasis that I wanted to cover this morning. So keep those items in prayer. Uh, also, here at God's Will Christian Fellowship, we believe in the three-tiered ministry approach, uh, three-tiered ministry objectives, evangelism, teaching, and worship. And I know with COVID-19, we were not able to do a lot of the things that we wanted to do. And but I thank God for our ministry and our event, our evangelical team, our evangelistical team, who is uh, planning. They're planning to do more things, and uh, we're going to step out on faith when God says so and hit the community hard. I thank God for First Lady leading our evangelism ministry. So we're looking forward to great things and being able to do some outreach. Amen. The Bible says to go. We cannot uh, uh, want members or disciples to come into the house of God. We have to go get them. We have to go get them. They're not coming. We have to go get them. So that's, that's the great command. We are to make, to mark, and to mature disciples. And if we expect people to accept Christ without us going out to get them, then we need to make sure we study the word of God. And, and the word says, go, go ye therefore and teach all nations. It doesn't say, we, we think ministries are coming here and get it. It's not a coming here, so go out there and take it. So that's evangelism. Teaching. I'm so glad that we are offering uh, so many uh, Bible studies. Uh, Evangelist Perlene did a wonderful job this morning Amen. teaching Amen. Bible study. I believe the lesson is on wisdom. And for her first time out of the gate here with all the cameras looking at her, uh, it can be overwhelming. But she did a marvelous job, and I thank Amen. God for Evangelist Perlene. Amen. Let's give God praise for Evangelist Perlene. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank God for Evangelist. Teaching. And then we talk about worship. Worship. God has placed something within each of us. Uh, he, he's given us an innate feeling to want to worship. All of us are worshiping something. And whatever we put before God can become our gods. So we, we have an innate um, something within us that wants to worship. But we need to be trained how to worship. Amen. Worship is not a feeling. But worship is what God desires. Worship is not a feeling, but worship is what God wants. So sometimes we don't feel like worshiping God, but God doesn't say, I, I don't want you, to, I want you to worship me only when you feel like worship. No. Yeah. Worshiping is a command. God commands us to worship him. Mm -hmm. It is not a feeling, but it is something that we do. As a matter of fact, sometimes worship can be a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's why God says in his word, uh, uh, praise him with the, uh, uh, the lips of sacrifice, the, yeah. uh, a sacrificial. Sometimes we don't feel like praising God, but God didn't ask us how we feel. Sometimes we don't want to worship God, but God didn't ask us what we want. He said, worship me. And when we begin to worship God, the atmosphere changes and things change and circumstances change. And if nothing else changes, worshiping God sometimes will change us and our appearance and how we perceive circumstances, which is of great value. That's worship. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Moving right along. As we talk about uh, Sunday school, every morning we have, uh, every Sunday morning we have Bible study. And one of our uh, famous, or one of our inspired, one of our uh, spirit-filled teachers teach. And uh, this morning, again, we had Evangelist Perlene uh, bring the word. And she was excited about it. And it was an excellent word talking about wisdom. So we are offering, uh, the offering is out there. Uh, we're offering Bible study every Sunday morning via uh, social media, and pretty soon, Lord willing, we'll be having it here at the Jones residence, uh, and we offer it on Monday nights through free conference call. So we are setting the table. We're putting the food out there, but we can't make people eat. We're setting the table, but if you're not hungry, then the food is going to be wasted. Amen. But somebody's going to come to the table and eat. Uh, I remember in, in some households, Dinner was set at a specific time. Dinner's going to be at this time. If you're not there to eat, then you're going to go to bed hungry. Well, we can set the table, and we can lay it out. We can put the silverware out. We can fill the plates up. But if nobody is going to make the sacrifice to come to the table and eat, then that meal is going to be wasted on that person. But somebody else is going to come and eat it. And somebody else is going to get a blessing that the other person should have got because they came to the table. 
Amen. 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 Now, if you like me, when I come to the table, if nobody else is there, I'm going to eat up everything. I'm going to eat my food and somebody else's food. So come to the table and eat. Amen. 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 So on Sunday mornings and on Monday nights at 7 o'clock p.m., we're getting ready to wrap up uh, the series on Matthew. And it's a Bible study where all ministers are welcome. Now, you might be thinking, well, I'm not a minister. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are a minister. Not a minister in the sense of preaching behind the pulpit, but a minister in terms of a servant. And this word is for everyone. So it's not the type of Bible study that if you miss so much that you can't jump in and learn something. Whenever you come, there is something that will be learned, and you don't have to sit in for the whole session to get everything. Amen. Amen. So we're getting ready to finish up Matthew, and I believe we're going to go start on Mark pretty soon. Also here at God's Will Christian Fellowship, you know we're streaming through Facebook, uh, social media, through uh, freeconferencecall.com, and through YouTube. So if you want to uh, get to a, a list of our services, look at our website. Our website contains some very valuable information. Our website is www.gwcfministries.com. All of our information is there, service times and uh, giving, donations, all of that's there. I thank God for uh, Bishop uh, Johnson, Pastor Vance Johnson. He looked at our website and saw that some things needed to be changed or some things needed to be implemented, and so we made those changes. So I would encourage you to go take a look at our website. If you haven't been there in a while, please look at our website, uh, view it, subscribe to it, like it, uh, www.gwcf ministries.com also we have the ability to accept all kind of donations through cash app through venmo and online if you look at our website you'll find uh, the ability to give donations through paypal which uses a credit card so we thank you thank you so much for all of your contributions because of your contributions we're able to make ministry go forward and i thank god for you god bless you last announcements you know before COVID-19 struck, uh, during the month of June, we would normally have our, our carnival extravaganza and our movie night. So because of COVID-19, um, we probably will not have those things in June, but if God says differently, maybe we will reschedule it for a different time uh, when things go back to semi-normal, amen, or a new normal, I should say. So we thank God for that. Um, we are on the 28th. We do have our ministry leaders conference at 6 o'clock p.m. So I encourage all ministry leaders uh, to call in last Sunday in June, which is June the 28th at 6 o'clock p.m. The numbers and things are listed there on our website. So check that out. Again, uh, July the 5th, Lord willing, our holy homecoming. And we do want to practice uh, social distancing and all of the CDC requirements and those things will be enforced because we want to keep people safe so if you don't have a mask one will be provided for you we'll have some masks here and we want to maintain uh right now the six feet distance from each other so we'll set things up to be in following with those guidelines or of course they may change by the time july the 5th comes around but we'll follow whatever guidelines are available at that time god bless you i believe that concludes all of our morning announcements are there any other announcements that anyone has or would like to make that announce? Any other announcements? Amen. We're going to go onward and upward. I am so privileged today uh, to present the speaker for the hour. It is none other than the first lady of this house, God's Will Christian Fellowship, Dr. Evangelist Tawana Jones. And after this video, we will present her. The next voice you will hear will be that of First Lady, Dr. Evangelist Tawana Jones. Preach the word, baby. Preach the word. Preach, Preach the, the word. word. Amen. Amen.
Boo. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> For grace, thank you, thank you, for understand, say thank you, for grace, thank you for mercy, thank you for understanding, thank you for wisdom, thank you for parents, thank you for love, thank you for kindness, thank you for humility, thank you for peace, thank you for prosperity, say thank you in advance for what's already how I live my life, that's why I, why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every moment that led to this day. Thank you for our hard times. They made me appreciate the good times. Thank you for the lessons. They were needed for my development. Thank you for my eyes that get to witness the miracles of today and tomorrow. Thank you for everything I take for granted. Thank you for all of my blessings. Thank you for my tribe. Thank you for my spirit. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for giving me the courage to fight through the hard times. Thank you for the people in my life. Those I love and those I learn from. Thank you for it all. opens the door to instant happiness, unlocks the door to everything we are really seeking in life, happiness and contentment, no matter what you say you want, money, riches, health, to help others, why do you really want it, when you drill deep down, the only reason anyone wants anything is the feeling we believe we will get from having it, that all boils down to happiness and contentment. And the truth is, we can have it now if we are grateful. And if you get quiet, get away from the noise of the world, and think for a moment about what you could be grateful for, I'm sure you can find plenty. Be grateful there's food on the table, air in your lungs, life in your body. Get grateful that you have opportunity, opportunity to take your life to a whole nother level to decide right now that you are going to live your dreams and never settle until you do. Get grateful for the mental strength you've been given to survive the hard times. Get grateful for your limbs if you have them. Many are not so blessed. Your eyesight if you have it. Many are not so blessed. Your hearing if you have it. Many are not so blessed. The health you do have. Many are your worst positions. Grateful for that one person that has had an impact in your life, or many people if you are so blessed. Then get grateful you can choose to be that person for someone else. That one that makes a difference in someone else's life, no matter how small. Get grateful you get to experience this magical universe. Today, look for miracles. I guarantee if you are looking, you will see them. There are unlimited things to be grateful for. Open your eyes. Unlock your amazing life. It's ready for you right now. Thank you for this day. Whatever it brings, whether a challenge I need to grow, a lineup to teach me patience, an unexpected blessing, every moment of joy, whatever today brings, thank you. Whatever it brings, I pray I have enough presence in each moment to know that no circumstance is my life. No high or low, no event, no thing is my life. Life is energy, and I know I'm so much more than my physical body. Thank you for my ability to love, to give to others my authentic love and kindness without expecting anything in return. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for my presence. Thank you for my ability to attract only the things and people that are in harmony with what I need in my life. Thank you. Thank you.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. We always want to give God thanks. Yes, yes. And, and um, the Bible, God's Word, declares that we should give Him thanks in all things. Yes, yes. And that video explains that perfectly. This morning, I just want to uh, thank God for the opportunity to be here and to, um, what I say, rightly declare the Word of God. Um, he has, the Word that He has given me, I pray that it fall on good ground, um, ground that is ready with nutrients, ground that is ready to grow the seed that God is Amen. preparing to plant. Amen. But before that, I just want to uh, thank God for the opportunity to be able to present his word and to present in this format um, and to reach those who um, still feel that church is essential. Yes, yes. Church has always been essential for us, yes. um, but to be online and to take time of your day and to acknowledge that God still lives, God still reigns supreme and that he's still essential in yes, your life. Yes, you know, yes. government can say, oh, they just figured it out, but we already knew yeah. that God is essential and yeah. the church and worship is yeah. essential yeah. to us. So we take this time right now to say thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Thank you, I want to thank, thank um, my husband and pastor, Pastor Frank Jones, for allowing me this opportunity to, to bring the word and to um, unearth in the treasure that God placed in me to present to all of you. Um, to my sister, Evangelist Perline, thank you so much for teaching this morning. Yes. Um, she taught on value wisdom. Yes. And something that I got out of the lesson that I wanted to share actually two things. And for the ministers, we're, we're supposed to bring information tomorrow, um, well, whoever's at our Bible study, on body, soul, mind, and spirit. Well, I saw something on in the lesson in verse 10 that talked about the heart and the soul. Right. So I would suggest some of you look that over, and there's a little bit of commentary about the heart and the soul. Um, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. So that might be a reference for someone um, if God's leading you that way. Also, um, out of the lesson, wisdom um, from what evangelists taught is that, and the, well, this part that I got wasn't even in the lesson really, that wisdom is acquired at different levels and that you acquire wisdom in your own time. Um, sometimes some people get it quicker, some people get a little slower, and some right kind of in the middle. But if you're seeking it, you will get it. Amen. You will get it. So that's the greatest thing there that I've got from that lesson, and thank you so much. And with God, we don't have any wisdom. We don't have any knowledge. Amen. So I also want to thank my family for being here. Um, they're also in the audience. Hey kids, thank you. The dog is sleeping, but he'll wake up soon. <laughs> but I just want to thank you for being here and those who have tuned in. And I have a little light and I have my glasses and this is my makeshift pulpit. And so wherever you go, wherever you declare God's word, you can make it a pulpit right. and make That's it right. Um, That's right. a place to present his word. So let us go right now to our God in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for you being God yes, and being God you. all alone. We thank you, God, for thinking of us and grafting us in as your, your children, calling us your friend. Yes, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that was, ooh, that was shed on Calvary's thank cross. You for your blood, Lord. Thank you. So I ask now, Lord, that you hide me behind your cross and that your words speak. Speak now, Lord, for your servant heareth. Yes, yes. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart Bless be acceptable you. in thy sight, Lord. Amen. For you are my Redeemer, and you are my God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And the pastor had did a, a video, and I know customarily we do a song, and I thought of this song. Help yourself. And now I feel a little nervous about singing it. Oh. <laughs> And the song talks about, I know I've been changed, right. for the angels in heaven done signed my name. All right. 
I know I've been changed. Yes, I know I've been changed for the angels in heaven done signed my name. Yeah, I know I've been changed. Yes, I know I've been changed. Whoa, I know I've been changed for the angels. been changed. I know I'm not what I used to be. I'm not quite what I need to be, but I'm on my way to being what God say has it, me to be. It, it. And so this morning, um, considering all that's going on in our world today and um, with COVID-19 and racism that we, again, we already knew was happening. And now that God put everybody in timeout, set them down and took everything away, we can see it, and it's clear that um, our, the, those who haven't seen it or were blind to it can see it now. Amen. During this week, I heard that the NFL commissioner had offered an apology to uh, Colin Kaepernick, saying, oh, we should have backed him up. Really? Racism is never right. Never right. Amen. And for them to suddenly feel that it's time to back him up. I just wondered, what are you thinking? You know, what are you thinking? And so, um, God was just showing me in Philippians 4, 8, if you want to go there now. Philippians 4, 8. And I have it in both. I have it in the New American Standard Version because it's a word a little different. And I also have it in the New King James Version. All right. And the New King James Version reads as this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, All right. whatever things are a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, yeah. meditate mm -hmm. on these things. Yes, yes. And then the, uh, that was the New King James Version. But if you go to Philippians 4, 8, in the American Standard Version, it says something like this. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good repute, if there is any excellence uh -huh. and if anything worthy of praise All right. dwell on these things. And I look at that and I see where one writer thought that he gave kind of the same um, attributes and same analogies, but one writer said that we should, if there's anything, uh, if there is anything, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And one writer said, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. And in either case, they're asking us to focus on right. something. Focus. And so the writer of this um, verse is none other than Paul, who is the writer of most of the New Testament. <clears throat> And Paul was telling the beloved Philippians of what things to think of. Um, our mind, I've been reading lately, um, Joyce Meyer's The Battlefield of the Mind, and it talks about how your mind is the first thing that the devil tries to attack. All right. He tries to get your mind, because if he can get your thinking stinking, as she says, your thinking stinking, then he can get your heart to reconsider. And he can get your body and your motives to do something different. Yeah, so yeah. Paul is telling us to how we should think about things. What should we value in Christ? What is the practice we should have in our lives? And he says if we do this, then God's peace 
will certainly be with us. Yeah. So let's look at what he suggests in his thinking or meditation and practice a little more closely. All right. So um, Paul keeps summarizing this new way of thinking. And it's not this new age thinking of just think positive and it's going to appear. Mm -hmm. This is a thinking of Christ's values, our good morals. This is a thinking and teaching more than just being positive, right. but ingraining yourself and becoming these things, yeah. becoming pure, becoming a lovely person, becoming good of good repute or a good reputation. It's not just thinking it, it's also a practice. All right. And so as I was looking at the practice, I was looking at the title for this uh, for this sermon. What are you thinking? All right. What are you thinking? That's good. When a cop can place his knee on the neck of an unarmed, handcuffed man, we have to ask, what are you thinking? Amen. He's got all the authority. He's got all the power. And yet he lays on George Floyd's neck for eight minutes, 46 seconds. All right. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? When those who are angry go to the street and they protest for their rights, but the rights turn into riots, mm. what, are you what are you thinking? I know that you're angry, my brother. I know that you're angry, my sister. But we have to take a stand for the rights and not to riot. Amen. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? When blatant racism is caught on tape for the world to see, and there is no justice, no immediate change, Come on. government officials, what are you thinking? On, lady, what are you it's thinking? been there. It's been happened. What are you thinking? Yeah. When mamas are killing babies and thinking it's all right to leave them in trash cans and leave Come them on, in the bottom man. of an ocean, a bottom of a lake in a car, what are you thinking? Paul admonishes us that we got to change our thinking. Yes, yes. There's evidence of widespread virus killing people by the thousands. Hundreds of thousands of people yes. have died. Another more hundreds and multiple of thousands are sick. And the public is advised to go back to your public places. Mm. What are they thinking? What are you thinking? It makes me wonder if there is that hidden agenda that's always been something in our community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just makes you wonder, what are you thinking? When an addict shoots up poison in their veins and will beg, steal, and borrow to get it. Come on. And then may overdose and die from it. What are you, what are you thinking? And I just remember before COVID-19, our government was thinking about having um, drug safe places. And I just remember this, they were thinking about having drug safe places where people can get high, can uh -huh. overdose or whatever, and have paramedics to revive them for their choices. What are they thinking? Yes, yes. When you look to the bottom of a bottle for your solutions, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? So Paul then admonishes us in Philippians 4.8 to change our thinking, and not just to change our thinking, but to put it into practice. And he tells them, um, now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts uh -huh. on what is true and honorable. So to fix our thoughts, take some effort. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So I had to look up the word think, and think, is to give serious and careful thought to, to meditate, to, compliment, uh, to temp, uh, contemplate, to consider, to deliberate. So if you're thinking about something and you want it to come to pass, it's more than just rash action. Right. You're not just going to go and do it. You are going to contemplate it. That means you're going to make a plan. Yeah. And if you're considering yeah. something, you're, not, you're taking a moment to take it all in and you're thinking of how much is it going to cost and how much will I have yeah, to do? Yeah, how much yeah, time is yeah. it going to take me? He's asking you to think. And then the word that really caught me was meditate. I know when... Um, as a teacher, we we're talking about mindfulness for children and, and how to get their brains to think and to meditate. And meditation is a practice where an individual uses a technique. 
such as mindfulness, or focusing the mind on a particular object, thought, or activity. So it's to train your attention and get and be aware of what's going on. Yes. And you should achieve mental clarity and emotional calmness. Okay? That's and that, that was some of the things from Wikipedia. Wikipedia isn't even all that reliable. Amen. So I went to dictionary.com, but that sounded good, and that sounded to me like what meditation is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dictionary.com said it's after meditating, and everyone knows that if you use the word in the definition, that don't help the definition. <laughs> so then the next one said continued or extended thought, reflection, contemplation. That sounded like what Paul was saying here to me. And then the third one said transcend, uh, transcendental meditation. And he was basing that on something that the Buddhists were doing. And I'm not talking about what they were doing. That's a form of their religion and their uh, belief. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about being devout in a religious uh, contemplation or a spiritual introspective of what's going on. All right. So I had to go further and look up meditation. I went to psych, uh, psychology today, and it gave me three things. And I thought, okay, this sounds like meditation and what Paul is talking about here. Um, it's concentration, focusing attention on an object, an internal or external outcome. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about, hmm, our fence blew down the other day from that windstorm. So my husband had to think about, hmm, how much wood is it going to take? Had to measure it out. How much is it going to cost? Uh, what uh, tools am I going to have to have? Oh, well, we're going to have to get all the boys together and tell them, you know, ahead of time so they can prepare. And then, and then while he's thinking about that, I'm thinking about, hmm, they're going to be working. It's hot out there. They're going to need some water. They might need some Gatorade. They may need something to eat. So we're thinking and we're meditating. We're contemplating on how to get this thing done so it's a concentration That's and then that observation paying attention to whatever is predominant in the experience so the observation the fence flew over we're going to need wood because the wood was all broken up and then the observation well we're going to need tools well thank god he's got tools <laughs> to prepare the the fence and then it says um paying attention without getting stuck on any particular thing and so, yes, there was little issue with the nail gun, whatever, but there was resolution because he was able to think through it. Okay, well, the resolution is we need different nails to fit this nail gun. So there was an observation. And then there was an awareness that remained present. And that means there was present, they were undistracted, they knew what they had to do, they had a goal, and they got to that goal. So this is what Paul is just telling us. He's just telling us to fix our thoughts on what is true. True, the fence fell over and it blew down. Yeah. Oh yes, it's going to be honorable to fix it because the, the HOA is going to say, you need to have your stuff in order. Yeah. So we want to do the right thing. And so that's right. And so we wanted to make it lovely. So we had to get the right kind of wood yeah. to make it prepare with the rest yeah. of the fence. And yes, it was admirable yeah. to get everybody together and to have them Preach fix the it. fence. Yes. So these things, oh, we thought about those things yeah. and it was excellent to get it done and it repaired the problem that we had. That's so good. Paul is saying, think on those things. That's good, good word, good word. Concentration, observation and being aware. So the goal of meditation is to go beyond the mind and experience an essential nature. What to describe as peace, happiness, and bliss. Well, I'm going to take out the happiness, but that peace is something that God gives us. Yeah. He gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. We may not understand how we're going to get to our goal. We may not understand how we're going to make it through COVID-19. Yeah. We may not understand how are they going to listen to our protest day after day until June 30th to election day. How are they going to do it? We don't know, but we know a God who is man, with us. Man. We know a God yeah. who stands with us. And if we go and praise him and we're worthy and we are doing the things that are excellent in his name, yes. he is going to come through for us. Amen. So if anyone tries to meditate 
on big obstacles and understand they need to know that they have to have their mind on a big God, a God that can come through. And so Paul says these things. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good reproof, yeah. concentration, focusing attention on that single thing. Focus on what is true Focus. and what is honorable. Mm -hmm. Concentrate on what is pure, what is lovely, and what is of good reputation. Yeah. It said, and if there is any excellence, that's the observance. You don't want to do things mediocre. God didn't create us to do mediocre and just do it uh, uh, average. He wants us to do things in excellence. And that's what Paul is telling us. Observe and pay attention. How can we handle this in excellence? We have uh, my uh, mentor and friend, uh, Dr. Dr. Joyce came yesterday, asked us to sign a petition. And she was looking for a way to do this in excellence. She's going from houses to houses where she's not standing outside. She's going to people. They're coming to her van where she can keep her social distance and they can sign the petition and then she can watch them do their thing and she can go on to the next house, the next family, the next person. So she's looking for an excellent way to get the policies changed in our government. So I appreciate her for doing that. So Paul makes the appeal to think to meditate, to focus on deliberately. Paul challenges our thought life yeah. to find ourselves content in every situation. So now we have these things going on around us and it's hard to find contentment because each day they're giving us a new, um, a new, um, a new thing to do. Um, uh, be social distancing six feet. Today you can go out to a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. now before it was wash your hands often. You know, they're saying all these different things for us to do, but how can we find ourselves content in this? We have to focus on God's word. Yeah, I appreciate what Evangelist Pearl was teaching this morning. He was teaching that we have to have God's wisdom. Yeah. No, we're not going to be foolish and just run out there Amen. and do anything. Yes, Amen. we're going to take precautions yeah. and we're going to be safe yeah. because we've done our observance to what is excellent. Yeah. And then he said, if anything is worthy of praise, dwell on these things. That means yeah. you have to be aware, allowing awareness to be present. You have to be aware of what's going on around you. Yeah. I remember when I was growing up, my dad used to tell me all the time, be aware of what's going on around you. Yeah. It saved me from a many of things. You know, don't always be the last one to leave the party. Be aware of what's going on around you. Yeah, yeah. Because in this day and time, especially what's happening with law enforcement and right. COVID, yeah. you have to be aware of what's going on yes. around you. So yes. you know when to step out and when it's time to leave, yes. you know yes. when it's time to move, you know when it's time to say something, yes. you have to be aware of what's going on around you. The other week we went to the protest and um, so proud of my children who protested and marched on that and we did it civilly, we did it peacefully Amen. and Amen. while uh, I was using the porta potty, had to go. And nasty as it was, use the hand sanitizer, everything, try not to touch nothing. But while I was doing that, a reporter came to our daughter. And I remember before we left, I kept thinking about all the news reports I was seeing of everything that was happening. And it came to me, you need to have something to say, like mm -hmm. a five second something to say if you're asked. And then I had that conversation with Tabitha. I said, Tabitha, do you have like a three minute, a, a five second something to say about what you're feeling? Because they don't want to hear a whole story. You got to say what you got to say, mean what you got to say, and then do that. And so while I was doing that, there was a reporter talking to her. And she had her statement. She said, well, I'm just going to say what's on my heart. And she did. She said what she had to say. And she talked about what was going on, what was unfair. She, she, she's an uh, African-American um, studies minor, so she knew the history of the Civil Rights Movement and this and that. So she was ready and she was aware. So she was able to answer in excellence. And that's what God is telling us. That's what Paul is challenging us to do. Don't just think about anything or blur out anything. Yeah. Think on these things yeah. and act in excellence. Yeah. And so I looked at Paul and then Paul being content in every situation. Wow, 
Paul lived in a time that we're not living in now, but Paul faced some things. They were killing Christians. Yeah, yeah. They were taking them and rolling them down barrels with spikes in them. They were dousing them in fire. They were putting them in arenas and, and having the lions chase after them and, and you know, um, um, let them gnaw them to their death yeah. and putting them in lion's pits. But Paul found himself content. Mm. How do you get that contentment? Mm. Paul, what are you thinking? Yeah. Paul is thinking about whatever is true, yeah, yeah. whatever is honorable, yeah. whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute. Paul is concentrating on those things yeah. and he's focusing on those things. And then he says, anything worthy of praise, then you praise that. Yeah, yeah. And so, Talk about as I said on a side note, I know that's difficult to think on these things when the world is acting so differently. But I know that there is a witness in Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, no, no, no. We are not satisfied. We will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters of righteousness, like a mighty stream. And if you don't know, he was quoting Amos 5.24. And him being a preacher knew God's word. And he knew that he had to act in peace. And then he said in his speech, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Yeah. And as you can see, people are seeing that. Yeah, the yeah, injustice yeah. done to George Floyd is an injustice everywhere. They're not just protesting Come in on. the United States. Talk They're protesting it. in Mexico, in yeah. Australia, in England, in London. Yes. They're protesting yes. in Paris. They're protesting everywhere. And they're upset about what's happening to our people. Amen. They recognize and they observed that and they are aware yeah. that an injustice anywhere, yeah. even if it's way over here in the United States, yeah. is an injustice yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And so Martin Luther King, he, he recognized this. And so our countries now, with COVID-19, God put us in time out and said, yeah. you're going to see this. You are going to recognize and you are going to be aware of what's happening. We're not going to have an injustice anywhere and claim justice is everywhere. That's not the way it goes. And so I think about Martin Luther King where there was a, a memorial that honored him and his message of freedom, equality, justice, and love that was a national mall devoted to him. Um, not to a United States president, not to a war hero, but to a citizen who acted for civil rights, Amen. who wanted to see peace and justice yeah. for everyone. Yeah. And so what I saw that is that he acted as Micah 6, 8. He, show, he says, uh, God says he requires us. He has shown you, O oh mankind, what is good. So we know what is good is. He said in his speech, I have a dream that little white boys, little yeah. white girls will play yeah. together. Yeah. So he saw something that is good. It says, and what does the Lord require of you but to act justly, yeah. to act fairly, uh -huh. to love mercy, yeah. and to walk humbly with our God, yeah. not walk away from God, yeah. not separate from God. Yeah. And if you and if you feel like God isn't around, guess who walked away? Amen. Walk Amen. closer to God. Say it, say it. He wants us to walk humbly. Love mercy. Yeah. And I know that it's hard when you see it on video and you see it on film that they're killing our people, killing our men. Yeah. It's hard to say have mercy on that person. Yeah. But we do want justice. Yeah. We want justice. Yeah. If they're killing, then they ought to be charged for murder. Yeah. Yes. Woo, my God. Yes. My God. Yes. Yes. So, we're turning our ears to wisdom and we're applying it to our heart with understanding. Amen. What are you thinking? I'm going to share these three things and then we will go. Take your time. What are we thinking? One, get time to think. Two, acquire the habit of thinking. And three, what shall we think? Paul gives us all of those. Get time to think. That time to meditate on God's word. In Psalms 1, it says that that righteous man, he meditates on his word day and night. That means he finds a time 
to meditate, yes. and to get time to think on God's word. It's necessary, absolutely necessary, for without time to think, our spiritual life cannot grow. We cannot grow in wisdom that you talked about. We don't have the knowledge of God. We cannot get that. And if we uh, don't have that time, then we can't hear God speaking to us. He's not, we don't have time to hear his voice. And if we don't hear God's voice, then we are running willy-nilly all over the place doing all kinds of things. And we're not following what Paul has admonishing us to follow today. And so, um, get time to think. Yeah. Get time to meditate, to concentrate on God's word. Set a time for it, whether it be early in the morning before you go to work, or if it's at night before you go to bed, if it's at your lunch break during the day, if it's just a time in the day that you take off and take that time to meditate on God's That's word. Good. Think yeah. on these things. Thank Number two, acquire the habit of thinking. So you have the time. Don't be distracted about all that's going on. Something in meditation, it talked about when you do like your breathing and you're trying to center, then the distractions come. Yeah. Well, if the distractions come, then you have to let them say, okay, I know this thought is coming. Well, I'm going to think on these things. I'm going to think on God. I have this time with God. I'm going to meditate on his word. Yeah, yeah, so you have yeah. to acquire the habit of thinking. Yeah. And don't be discouraged if distractions come in the first yeah. few times yeah, that yeah, you yeah. try to sit down and have this time with God. Yeah. Keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. Yeah. And just keep on praying. Yeah. God will be there. Yes. And he wants you set a time. He's, he's going to be looking for you to be there at that time. He's going to be wanting you to be there. And that's going to be the most precious time of your day. Day. So acquire the habit of thinking. It forms a habit just as the body does. If those habits are habits of idleness or daydream or vanity, then the mind will come useful, useless to thinking. Yeah, yeah. Discipline your mind. Discipline. That's one of the things that Joyce Myers talks in her book about the battlefield of the mind. You have to discipline your mind. Keep still and think. Think deeply on his word. Become so deep Think so regularly that you require the habit of thinking on God's word. And you will see a change in your life. You will see a positive influence that will happen in your world. You will see God come in. And at 1 Peter 2.12, it says, Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. Because you have the habit of thinking and you have the habit of applying God's word, yeah. then you will have the habit of doing good things yeah, and yeah. doing good deeds where your God will be glorified. Amen. Last point. What are you thinking? What shall we think? I apologize. What shall, think? what shall we think? And what shall we think? Um, and this is a scientific thing. Uh, as a teacher, it's called metacognitive thinking. Metacognitive thinking is thinking about what you're thinking about. Okay. <laughs> okay? Right. So, you know, sometimes you might be, oh, okay, it's a nice day. Thinking about. Okay, so I'm thinking about it's a nice day. Well, what am I thinking about it's a nice day? You know, it's like thinking about what you're thinking about. Okay. So it's one's thinking and learning, oneself as a thinker and a learner. Um, metacognitive uh, put simply, it's thinking about one's thinking, more precisely. You're thinking about one's thinking. And, and in God's word, um, what, uh, the scripture, it talks about your thoughts, that we are to uh, transform our thinking in Romans 12. All right. Oh, let me go to Romans 12 real quick. Amen. <clears throat> when we talk about transforming and being transformed, we have to go to Romans 12, yes, too. Yes. Do not be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, yes. that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So we have to renew our minds. We have to think about what we're thinking. And that's part of that metacognitiveness. 
What are we thinking about? <clears throat> what shall we think? That's part of that transformation. If you don't think about what you're thinking about, you can't renew what you're thinking about. Right. And then I, I don't want to make that complicated. If I'm thinking about, mm -hmm, I'm going to eat this chocolate cake, but I know I promised to be on that diet. Well, I've got to change my thinking. I can't think about the chocolate cake. I'm going to have to think about maybe that apple over there and how juicy it is or that watermelon I cut up the other day and maybe have that. But I have to think about what I'm thinking and renew my thinking. Renew my mind. So when you're doing that, you're driving out wrong and impure thoughts from your heart. We must do it. Um, unless, and unless we obtain good thoughts to fill their place, evil thoughts will return seven times over. Amen. Amen. What then shall we think? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, yes. whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Yeah. These are the things that Paul is telling us yeah. how to change our thinking. It's that as a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So whatever you're thinking in your heart, it will soon become manifested. So we have to think about what we're thinking. We have to think metacognitively and be aware of what's going on in our thought processes. So, but uh, when we think about these things, um, what are we thinking? Who the loveliest thing is that just do which is lawful and right? <clears throat> and we think about who does this justly thing and who has this singleness of heart? What are you thinking? Are you thinking of the one who keeps the temple of the soul pure and bright in the presence of that one, the holy one? What are you thinking? All right. Are you thinking about uh, who hates all the ignoble and loves the neighbor as himself? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Are you thinking about what a man has to fear? Don't think about that. Hmm. Think about the, that your eternal God is with you. He yeah. said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. And when you let God in, he will open the heavens for you. Oh, You'll be able to see God ascending and descending mm -hmm. upon the Son of Man, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Think about these things. Thank Think you. about Jesus Christ, how he bore the cross, yeah. how he saw injustice yeah. and would drag from judgment hall to judgment yeah. hall yeah. and who was treated unjustly. Are you aware of Jesus Christ? Are you thinking about the truth, the truth of his word, Come that on. he is the way, the truth, and the life? Thank Are you thinking about Jesus Praise. Christ? Come Are on. you thinking about how honorable he is? For him not to say a word, but then to come back and prove them all in three days all and rise up. Thanks. Are you yeah. thinking about what is right? Are you thinking about what is pure? How Jesus Christ, the sacrificial on, lamb, on, on. without blemish, how he was sacrificed, did not do any sin, did not do any come wrong, on. but he was sacrificed for us. He did it, and he wasn't a lovely picture when it happened, come on. but Jesus Christ did it. And when he came back, it was a beautiful thing. Yes. He was of good report yes. and good repute and of good reputation yes. because God did what he said he's going to do. Yes. What are you thinking about? Are you going to do what you said you're going to do? Yes. Are you going to be honorable before men and before God? Yes. What are you thinking about? Yes. Are you thinking about life? And how God has conquered death. That no matter what happens to the body, no one can take the soul. Because we got Jesus Christ. What are you thinking about? Dwell on these things. Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's cross, pierced in his side. Blood and water came rushing out. They buried him in a bower of grave. Who borrows a grave? What are you thinking about? Who borrows a grave? He used borrowed a grave and was in there for only three days and rose on the third day yes, with all Lord. power in his hand, oh, reigned Lord. supreme on God's right yeah, side, yeah. has power, came back and showed his wounds, yeah, said, Lord, Thomas, yeah. you doubt me? You are the noble one. Come and feel what's in there. Thomas 
was thinking about, oh, I didn't have to believe him, but Thomas wanted to know for himself. And he found out that he is the Christ. That he is the Christ. And that same Christ is coming back again for you and for me. He's the God who went to the heavens and to the kingdom and prepared a place for us. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Don't let the enemy deter you from your heavenly goal. Don't let the enemy deter you from your faith. Don't let the enemy deter you. What are you thinking about? Think on these things. Dwell on these things. God bless you. God bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for transforming our minds. Thank you, Lord, for giving us what is pure to think about. Thank you, Lord, for rescuing us from ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be abused by the evil one, but we can think on what you have and that you've given us power to defeat the enemy. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for the changes that are going to come because of your word. Your word does not come back to your void. It's been planted in the hearts of men and women and children. It will not come back to your void. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Think on these things. Think on these things. Oh, Jesus, have your way in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you for that word, first lady. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Whew. What a mighty word. What a mighty word from God heaven we have heard today. God bless you, first lady. Yes. What a powerful yes. word. My God. God yes. was in this place. What are thank we you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have what your way in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Think on these things. Yes. Amen. So many things try to occupy our minds. Yes. But we need to think on these things, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, yes. whatever is of virtue, things of God, think on those things. Yes. If we be risen with Christ, why do we set our affections on things on the earth? Right. God says, think on these things. Think up above where our Heavenly Father is. Yes. Think on these things. Mm. Amen. First Lady preached some powerful words and yes. some things that stuck out in my spirit. Yes talking about focus on something yes. we ought to focus on something mm -hmm. and then some other words she used that are uh, words that uh, commandeer our thoughts and uh, mm -hmm. make us use some action she said we need to concentrate, concentrate. Observe, observe be aware yes. then she talked about deliberate yes. whatever we do for Christ should be deliberate it shouldn't yes. be an accident yeah. that it happened yeah. right. should be deliberate. deliberate she talked about excellence we give the world our best, mm. but when it comes time for Jesus, mm. do we give him our best? Yes. We give the world, whatever the, our bosses, we go to those of us who are employed, whatever the boss says, you know, if it's not, you know, out of line, we will do it. We'll do it in a hurry. Yeah. We try and do it ahead of schedule. But when God asks us to do something, yeah. well, let's wait a minute. I don't want to rush into nothing. Let's just take our, do it with excellence. God didn't call us to be slumbering and sleeping. Yes. He wants us to move swiftly. Yes. When God calls, we shouldn't be saying, well, let me think about it. Let me pray about it. Yes. Let me uh, wait and see. If you know God has called you to do something, yes. move swiftly. Yes. Don't wait and procrastinate. Move yes. swiftly. Yes. My gosh, she talked about how uh, wisdom, wisdom is a thing of beauty. Mm -hmm. Thinking about what we're thinking about. She took us to school. Yes, she Amen. Did. First lady took, talked yes, about metacognitive thinking. <laughs> thinking about what you're thinking about. Yeah. Thinking if you think about what you're thinking about, that ought to keep your mind on the word of God. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you think about the word of God, and so God so loved the world. And why did God love the world? God yeah. loved the world because if you keep if you keep that train of thought, nothing should get into distraction. Yeah, right. So thank you, first lady, for that. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing the way God works because what uh, Evangelist Perlene taught this morning yes. and what First Lady preached this afternoon on talking about wisdom, one of the, the closing statement from the Sunday school lesson is the same thing the First Lady was talking about, which stuck with me. It says God's wisdom will never depreciate in value. Mm -hmm. God's wisdom will never depreciate in value. 
Other things depreciate, cars, houses, land, money, it all depreciates. Yeah. But whatever we do for Christ, it's going to last. Yes. Thank you, First Lady. Praise God. We have had some Thank church you. up in the house today. Yes. Amen. 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 We're going to move on. We're, we're going to ask an Evangelist Perlene to come with the invitation. Yes. Maybe there's someone out there who needs to know Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, Amen. thank you. I am standing in the Jones's home this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And I have been totally blessed. Amen. I have been totally blessed. I thank God for us coming together near and far. Yes. Near and far. And for those of you that you, you, you just want some satisfaction in your heart. Yeah. You want a little more wisdom. Yes. Well, I can tell you the name of Jesus. That's the man that you can come yes. to and get all of that and more. Yes. And more. Not yes. just that. You can come to him and get more. And if you need someone to just give you a word on him, there's so many different churches and so many different areas to reach out to yes. learn about Jesus Christ. And just come to him. You don't have to come to a house of worship come to him yes because he is the church he yes. is the body he is who we should come to just get to know jesus because once you come to jesus you you will not want to you will not want to go anywhere else because he says seek and ye shall find and i just ask that if you need an anchor in your life it's jesus come to him Give him everything that you are burdened down with. Jesus is the way. We here at Gospel Christian Fellowship, we offer that. We offer Jesus. We offer him because he has seen us through the way. A lot of people say, how'd you get there? Through Jesus. And he'll bring you through every situation that you have. Come to Jesus. Come to him right now. Because he is the way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He won't let us down. That's who you need. We'll turn to man for different things in this world. And it goes away. But his love never, never, he will never turn his love from us. He's with us at all times. Just come to Jesus right now. And we offer a home of worship here at Phil. Yes. Gospel Christian Fellowship. If you're looking for a home, if you're looking for someone to worship, somewhere to worship and learn more about Jesus, we offer that. And again, for this year of our, we are here offer a home of people that love and kindness and that's what God wants in all of us to be loving and kindness just and, 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 and faithful and we have that here at Gospel Christian Fellowship if you need a home we have a website we are on Facebook just, just come And if you need to be dipped, if you need to be dipped in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we offer that. We offer that here at Gospel Christian Fellowship. And we just ask that when all of this is over, when all of this is, is behind us, remember, guys, we're a Christian fellowship. We offer these things. And the next that we offer is prayer. If you just want prayer, we're willing to pray for you. In any circumstance, God answers prayers. And when we come together and pray and call upon his name, can you imagine the multitude of 
that? Prayer. We all go through struggles, trials, and tribulation, and we all need prayer. Just because we find, get in a situation to where we think that, oh, we know God and we doing what we supposed to do and we got it made and it, no, it doesn't stop there. That should be an everyday, all day going thing. Prayer. Talking to God. In the relationship with him. Letting him know that you know that he's the reason for this life. But we offer prayer here. If you need prayer at any time of the day, night, just ask and it shall be done. We're willing to pray with you, cry with you, laugh with you. We're willing to do all those things because not only are we a praying church, we're praying family. church home, come on. You need baptizing, come on. You need prayer, come on. You need Jesus, come on. We're willing to give you a word on him, and if there's something that we don't know, we got other evangelists and pastors and deacons and other sources to find out what you need to find out about Jesus. But one most and for all, get to know him. Get to know Jesus, because he will set you free from all your burdens that you have in this world. from whom all blessings flow. We thank him for the marvelous things that he has done. We have had some church today, meaning we have felt God's spirit in the house from Bible study all the way through worship service. We thank God for the lesson on wisdom, and we thank God for the message on what are you thinking? Amen. Amen. For some, some parents can understand this. Parents can really understand this. There may be some youth that can understand, but parents really understand this. You know how sometimes your children do some things and you're just like, what in the world are you thinking? <laughs> Amen. That's what that sermon was. What do you think? God is asking us, what are you thinking? And to keep our minds stayed on him. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we will see you tomorrow, Monday, 7 o'clock p.m. online, yeah. freeconferencecall.com. So I pray that you would join us there. Uh, it's not just for pulpit ministers, but anyone who has accepted Christ as Savior, you can reach us there. If you need more information, look on our website. You will find all the information you need. Again, our website address, www. GWCFMinistries.com. Yes. God bless you. Amen. 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 We are going to close with our benediction statements. So just repeat after me, unless there's someone else in the house who would like to read the benediction statements. Then I will read them. Repeat after me, please. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. I will do God's will. I will do God's will. God promises blessings for doing his will. God promises blessings for doing his will. Blessings will overtake me when I do God's will. Blessings will overtake me when I do God's will. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I come in. I am blessed when I come in. I am blessed when I go out. I am blessed when I go out. I am the head and not the tail. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am above only and not beneath. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am healed spiritually. I am healed spiritually. I am healed physically. I am healed physically. I am healed financially. I am healed financially. I am healed mentally. I am healed mentally. 
mentally. I am healed emotionally. I am healed emotionally. I believe God. I believe God. I am saved. I am saved. I am a child of the Most High God. I'm a child of the Most High God. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am blessed. 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 The safest place to be. Place to be. Is in the center of God's will. Is in the center of God's will. I will do God's will. I will do God's will. God bless you. Bye bye. All right. Amen. Amen.